society, and the nation of some of our society, uh, in relation to national economy of science, and in relation to physics society. And one of the remarkable appreciation of him was given by the International Astronomical Union, from IAA in uh, 2010, by naming one of the asteroid, uh, asteroid 1216, over this name. So this asteroid, so it's called the world, has 1216, the This among others. And uh, for today, uh, the topics is about exoplanets and the zone of habitability. The time is just My colleague, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to be here today for the great teachers, whom I always admire. I've admired my teachers since my childhood, and I'm, I was very happy when I could visit some of them after my graduation. Of course, they became very old, and one of them, as a matter of fact, asked what my profession was. At that time, I was just appointed as a professor of astronomy. So I told her that I became a teacher at ITB, and she was not impressed by ITB, asked me, why teacher? I thought you were becoming a Bupati. He oh. thought Bupati was higher than the teacher, but I didn't argue about it. I think I understand the framework of the older people, older generation of me, about the pangkat in Indonesia. She was the remnant of the Dutch school of teachers in the 30s. Well, my title is about exoplanet. Actually, I changed a little bit. Exoplanets, the next frontier. Indeed, astronomy has engaged, has embarked on the new frontier by searching for exoplanets. But behind it, there is still a question that is the habitability, habitability, whether the planet can be use for mankind or not is another question, or whether there is life on it, still another difficult question to answer. The problem is we only know one symbol of life that is us here, good or bad it is us, and only one symbol of life, and from the standard error formula, which all of you know, of course, that the probability or the standard error of, of a sample depending on square root something over n minus 1. If n equal to 1, then the standard error is very, is infinity. <clears throat> I'm trying here to talk with you, to discuss with you, therefore, I would like to ask you if there is something that you might want to know more, please just raise your hand. I will answer immediately, of course, at the cost of time, but it is better to do so, rather than waiting until some time later, because I'm not always here. I have in front of me the, type, the list of names of the participants. There is a certain Mr. Peng, Gun Tan Peng, from Cambodia. I thought you were from Kutus. <laughs> but you are from Cambodia. Of course, it's difficult to, to know people from Southeast Asia from one another. And there is also a um, colleague from Brunei Darussalam, Dekan Nurul Aminatun Valida. Is she here? What do you call, what is DK mean? I think, what? Dayanku. Do you know the meaning of Dayan? I was hearing earlier, I was aware of Dayan. Okay, well, I agree that your name is Dayan, because you looks like a Dayan anyway. <laughs> Mr. Chandra 
Sirinawe from Thailand. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I, I, from the name I cannot. And then Mirasol Perez. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I would like to ask him. This is him, isn't it? Oh, Mirasol Perez is Mrs. or Miss or Mr. It's a mix. It's not here. I would like to ask him whether he, she is a family of Yuka Perez. <laughs> of course, some soul to it. Bisa cakap bahasa Indonesia atau bahasa Melayu? Boleh. There is also a certain Soda Vieng So Phantom from Lao. Lao. A colleague from th Vietnam, Tran Thi Lan Huong. Oh. Well, all the rest are Indonesian, I assume. Of course, there are some very interesting names. Lia Paring Pangesti from Pekanbaru. Not Pangestu? I see. Oh, it's... that's so. Of course, this is a girl from SMAN1 Pansa Lautang, Fatima Samsul. But please tell me, where is Pansa Lautang? Uh, it's from uh, Where is that? Oh, okay. Uh, this is very nearby, my own neighbor from Bokor, City Norman Gra. It's next door. Okay. I will get to know you more later on. But something attracted my mind here. Penny Satorini from Babylon. Oh, Babylon Bekasi. I thought Babylon Central Java. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know from the title list. It's already distributed. It's so funny. And zone of habitability. I think the key word is zone of habitability, which I would like to discuss later on. But did you receive this, the summary already? Okay. <clears throat> May I just standing here because doing a seminar by sitting is not proper, I think. Also, I was a teacher and still teaching, but I think it's better if I can walk around. And if you have any question, please raise your hand. And I'm a bit big-headed, because the first slide which I would like to show is it the oh. Yeah, this is a title. And the first slide which I would like to show is my article written on the 26th of May, 1960. You were not born yet. Mencari Tata Surya Light is searching for other planets. Searching for exoplanets, actually. It is a question of hope and outlook at the time when I was a student trying to think something far ahead of my position. In, in it, I tried to discuss what a new planet would look like. But, of course, it is not true. What I had in mind has just been changed or has changed a lot in the, fall, in the intervening years. 1960 is about almost more than 50 years ago. When I was still young, I wrote this article. I'm not 82, so it's not young anymore. But still, I can see many beautiful ladies here. So don't worry. Uh, my second show is about Barnard Star, a very inconspicuous star at about six light years from the sun. It is very far away, and it is not very interesting, actually. If you just show the picture, you won't be able to gauge, to tell something about its significance. But 
1963, I'd like to show you the next slide, please. Professor Peter van der Kamp from Sproul Observatory in USA, who was studying binary stars, found out that, uh, that he can fit the position of the binary stars in such a way that he can deduce the hidden mass, the unseen mass. You know, in 1963, no idea about new planets, about exoplanets, but when he announced it in an American Astronomical Society meeting, where I was also present, I was a graduate student, we were excited. All of us in the room said, hurrah! to celebrate the finding of the so-called hidden mass, or at the time was called hidden planet. This is 1963. And then when we went back to the school, the graduate student organized a seminar discussing about, discuss about whether it will be possible another planet exists somewhere in, this, in the Milky Way. The answer was yes, unanimously. All the graduate students think it is the possibility, great possibility, that a new planet is there, but how to find them was another matter. In 1963, 1964, there was a radio astronomer from Germany, but he works in America at Virginia at the observatory a big observatory there. The name was Sebastian von Horner. He also the proponent of the exponent of finding life in somewhere in the universe. But his approach was trying to get the signal by radio astronomy from them. Meaning that when they are when they are advanced enough then they will try to find us. They will try to find people elsewhere in the universe. However, the universe is so large, and if you turn around your head, you will find stars anywhere. This is true for people who are looking, who were looking for the companion or the neighbor. They should survey the sky all around him in a sphere. And Unfortunately, Sebastian von Horner could not detect any signal that indicate the existence of life out there. Then he made a theoretical calculation about the possibility of finding life elsewhere. Of course, life is only known on Earth at that time, right now also, it's known only exists on Earth. Sebastian von Horner found that the probability of finding life is to look at a star 1,000 light years away from us. Meaning, but the sky is 360 degrees around. 300, sorry, 1,000 light year is a great distance. When light year is the distance which is covered by the electromagnetic wave in one year. That is a three with so many zeros behind it in kilometers. The probability of finding is one in one thousand uh, is one thousand light years away without any clue of where to find it. You know, there are so many stars, 300 million stars in our own Milky Way. And of course, it was very difficult. So this means that if you send your signal, your message via your handphone, your message will reach the other population if he is, just think, if he is smart enough 1,000 years later. And in order to get the answer, you have to wait for another thousand years. So at least two thousand years to wait for your signal that was sent by your HP, your and phone. And that is not possible in one generation. Two thousand years is a 
about what? If one generation is only 60 years and 2,000 years is 30 generations, nobody, no child, no president, no king can wait for 30 years, for 2,000 years. Just too long. Our president lived only a few hundred years maybe, but he cannot wait for that that long time to have the signal answered. Now back to this Barnard star, as I told you, the first ever thought, the binary, binary stars having a companion by Professor Van der Kam at Sproul Observatory. I mention this because Indonesia at the Bosca Observatory has been involved in studying binary stars, double stars, since its beginning in 1926, trying to find out the trajectory of the fainter star around the brighter stars, but never had been thought, or my predecessor never thought that there would exist a dark body in it. Now, after hearing Peter van der Kamp found through the binary system, a dark companion, of course, our mind turned to our work here in Bosca, whether, whether it would be possible to find the binary stars or not. I jumped to 1975. I wrote in the compass, Etty, where are you? Etty is a beautiful girl's name. But Ate is also Japanese name, typical girl's name, Japanese. But for you who, are, who come from abroad, I would like to say that Ate is a girl's name. Yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt. Is it okay if I interrupt your? Yes, yes, please. Before we go further, um, I want to ask a question about the question of the Bible. Uh, I want to ask a question related to the 60s era. To the? 60s era. 60s, yeah. 1969, when the Apollo 11. Uh, landed on the moon. What happened in Indonesia at the time? I mean, uh, uh, regarding to the astronomical world, uh, people like you, do you did you feel the euph uh, the euphoria, or is there was there anything that uh, you do and with your teacher or your lecturer at the time? Yes, I would like to answer your question with interrupting my my exposition. In 1969, the first man stepped on the moon. First American, actually, the first man time. Of course, it created an euphoria. People were happy, except some people who did not believe it, because they thought it was a make-up, a Hollywood-style show. But I personally, as an astronomer, young astronomer at that time, four years after I got my PhD, I truly believe what had happened in those days because I participated in the NASA's program in 1965 before I went back to Indonesia. So there was no question about people that stepped on the moon. And we are happy. It's one little step, but it, mean big. it means big for mankind. Is that answer to your question? Some traditional Muslims did not believe it, I should say this, because they thought God's place cannot be stepped by mankind. That is the only argument they proposed. But I was trying to explain that it is possible to do so. I wrote in a newspaper in Pikiran Rakyat at that time about the possibility of mankind jumping to the moon. And possibly to other planets. At that time, we didn't know whether people could land on Mars or not. But I, I said in a rather low tone about the possibility of people landing on other planets. Okay? Well, here is, I ask, Eti, where are you? Eti is the acronym for extraterrestrial intelligence. By 1975, people have already talked about at the extraterrestrial intelligence because it would be impossible that on the Earth can harbor life. There must be somewhere in the universe life exists. 
I have a good experience, maybe some years later, to have a guest, a clergyman, a Catholic clergyman, Manun Wijaya. Romo Manun Wijaya came to my house in the middle of night, the night, asked me, do you believe that there exists life on another planet? As an astronomer, yes, but right now we have no answer where it is, where they are. His further question was, to my mind, a little bit funny, if there exists life elsewhere, how the God would look like by then? I cannot answer, of course, I'm not a very good religious man, but uh, he is a Tepharki man, a pastor, so he would know better that people would like to celebrate it if there exists life on another planet. But that was in 1975, 1976. Now we are in 2016, which have been indicated that there are some planets that can host life, like the Earth hosting us all. Okay, this is the uh, next one. Why I mention this? Because Mr. Rahmat Haryati was not an is not an astronomer. He is a correspondent, but he has a far-fetched view about astronomy, about the universe, and about life and universe in the universe. Then he wrote a book about the step, following the step of life on another planet. He wrote very interesting book and interesting because I was asked later on to put my four words on that book, which I gave him the, my, my, my willing to do so, with the title Extraterrestrial Life of Romat Haryati, he took the Tetangga Mencari Eti, meaning living together and by searching for Eti. Yes, please. I'm just curious about our ancient life when uh, we have pure energy also we have a certain borders uh, of the world, but in the past life people can build such a huge and beautiful things. Uh, some people believe that they help by alien or uh, What do you think about that? Why do you always think alien can build it? Um, Why do you think that our ancestors were clever enough to build such a thing? Yeah, because right now we cannot build such a thing like that. Because you don't want to. Okay. But there are many high-risk buildings. Many long stretching bridges. With the low technology they have in, in the past time, uh, is it possible for them to build such a great thing like that? It is possible. There are many ways to raise great stone up to the pyramid. It has, it has already been proven that even our ancestors in those days, with their simple tools, could build it. And our ancestors, clever, can see far away from the from their time. Yeah. So don't worry. Like maybe you would like to ask me, who built Angkor Wat? <laughs> Nobody would doubt that it would be it would be built, it would have been built by our ancestors, or your ancestor rather than my ancestor. My ancestor built Borobudur. This is also great enough. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, my my foreword for that book. So, what I would like to say is that talking about extraterrestrial intelligence is or uh, has been my favorite slide. Uh, the following slide on the left hand side. I'd like to show you how beautiful the sky is, full of dots of light and those representing the stars. In the bright object on the left is the so-called Alpha Centaurus, the nearest stars to us. Nearest, that means four and a half light years away from us. The light will take four and a half years to reach that star. And shown 
in the foreground as a background of so many stars behind it. I, to, I show this because in the 1961, in 1954, I wrote a technical article when I finished my ITP study, object with 8 alpha emission in southern Tulsac. Southern Tulsac is the, 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 is the black, black spot over there. That is what they call southern Southern Tulsac here by our ancestors because they didn't know what it is, what it was. But Humboldt, the great traveler, when he went south to Africa, he explained that the southern Tulsac is something that is part of the universe. As a matter of fact, now we know that Southern Tulsac is filled with many young stars. All of them are hidden behind the Tulsac because this is like a screen that is hampering the light from the stars behind them, behind it. Now, young stars, many young stars are found in this area. At that time, we didn't know that black cloud like that was an interstellar matter. Interstellar matter was discussed sometimes later in the 70s, uh, in the late 69. Then we know that what I was looking was really a young star embalmed and close in a dark cloud like this. Okay, we leave that because I would like to show you the next important thing. This is the central part of the Milky Way. Indonesian called them Pima Sakti. Pima is the name of the Wayang, Wayang figure. And the telescope in front here is the telescope at La Silla, Chile, which was equipped six or seven years ago with new type of instrumentation in order to detect the motion of stars which move away or close or move toward the observer with a speed of only 50 centimeters per second. Very, very small motion, but the instrument was so powerful that it could detect the motion with such a low speed. 50 centimeters per second is the motion of a young baby, of, the, of a baby on the floor when they learned, when they first learned to walk. And if a star moves toward us or away from us with a speed of 50 centimeters per second, the instrument here could detect it. No, with that kind of instrument, people trying to look a million of stars, choosing which one have a companion who move that fast between code, of course. Now, I will leave this the situation, and I would like to show you the <clears throat> the meaning of studying binary stars at the Bosca Observatory. There are some stars which are very bright, but the companion is very faint. This makes astronomers difficult to photograph them. Remember, this is in 1958-60. Very difficult to, to photograph a star of this bright with a companion of this fame. Therefore, it was lucky that the professor van Arbata from the Bosch Observatory designed the so-called gratings in order to put away the extra light that is caused by the bright stars in order to catch the faint stars here. Here is the the, the structure at the images that he would like to get with his greetings. The bright star will produce a companion of images like this and then the rest will be diminished or ignored. But by doing this, you can put the faint star here in between the two, the two spikes so that you can measure the distance of these faint stars to the 
center of the bright star. By doing that, you can measure, you can deduce, you can deduce the orbit of the faint star around the bright stars. Ah. This is an achievement for those days for photographic photometry and for astrometry. You must remember that in 1958, only photography was employed in order to detect binary stars. Nothing else. There was no handphone, no nothing. So, slide record, uh, so the following slide indicate that uh, Sirius A, that was the bright star which I just shown, moved around its common center of mass and Sirius B, the fainter one, moved this way. Sometimes when they are close to each other, you cannot see the fainter one. But when they are far away, you can see the fainter one relative to the bright one. But it is important to measure the position of two stars in order to determine the orbit of the stars. Only with a special device that is designed at Limbang, you can photograph the bright star and the fainter one at the same time and determine its position in the sky. We, we go further on, leaving serious problem. I would like to show you that here is the orbit of the fainter one and this is the center of mass of the two stars. It was studied by Sarah Lee Lippincott. The red one in the, here indicates that this is the period we are studying. You say the greetings that was used at Limbang, designed by our professor Van Arbada. You see, this is the fainter stars. Every time we photograph them, we measure the position of the fainter star relative to the center of, of the bright star. And finally, we can deduce the orbit. But this orbit is, takes very long time. For example, from 1980 until about until the next one, five years, the star moved only a little bit here, and then a little bit there, a little bit there. So we follow the motion of the of the fender stars, and finally, in 1998 we can produce the, the orbit of the fainter star relative to the common center of mass. But <clears throat> in the center of mass here, <clears throat> yeah, the center of mass is there. You know how to determine the center of mass. If you have two bodies, <coughs> you can join the two bodies and determine the center of mass in between. The larger the, the primary, the center of mass is closer to the center of the primary. We found out, interestingly, that the motion of this star is not as smooth as what you can see here, but a little bit wiggle. Unfortunately, we have not been able to determine any indication whether the star has dark companion or planet or unseen planet. We will leave this. I will tell you my involvement at Lembang to study double stars. Double stars are those stars close together and one orbiting the other, or one or the two of them orbiting the common center of mass. You, if you have two stars very close together, they cannot stay alone. They have to to move around in order not to be attracted by the heavier stars. And if you look at the sky, yeah, here for example, the bright star is the Proxima Centauri, the nearest stars to us. I mentioned before that Alpha Centaurus is the nearest star to us, 4.3 light years away, in other words, and only within half, four and a half years, you can go there. But in 1928, Professor Falter from Limbang also 
can prove that this Prax Proxima Centauri is a member of binary stars, of this binary star I have just mentioned. So this is the nearest star, which is only a few meters, few kilometers closer to us. But nevertheless, Proxima Centauri is, or yeah, still is the closest to our solar system. All of the bright spots here are stars behind Proxima Centauri, and still, and there are still in our own Milky Way. We have studied binary stars in order to deduce the masses, because as you can see from the following, the studying double stars, meaning to wait to determine the masses of the stars directly. There was no other way, there is no other way actually to measure the masses of the star, except when you are studying the binary orbit of the double star. Besides that, to determine the disturbance of the relative orbits of the binary components, as I have mentioned, if the orbit is not smooth but wiggle, this means that there is some disturbing object nearby, unseen by our eyes or by photographic plates, but we can measure the mass as was found by Peter van der Kamp. And then to establish the form of the orbits leading to distant determination of the binary. This is the way you measure the distance of the stars from us because using the parallax dynamic, we call it parallax dynamic, dynamics that is combining the Kepler law and the Newton law, which all you are familiar with at the school, you can determine the distance of the star. Now, by measuring the distance of the star from us accurately, you can measure the candlelight, the brightness of the stars, and then compare with other stars in order to determine the distance of the distances of the other stars. Okay? That is the zone, but the, we have studied double star many thousand and finally we compile in the next photographic observation of visual double, double star. The name visual here is important because we only study the object that can be seen by us. Thousand about visual double stars have orbits which are very regular, very nice elliptical form without any disturbance of of disturbances of the, uh, from, the, from the unseen body. But of course, maybe the unseen body is very small. Suppose our sun is a double star. One is located sometimes somewhere outside of the Neptune orbit. Our Earth cannot be seen from a distance at 4.2 kilo, uh, 4.2 light years from, away from us. But people who are there, who were there, can deduce the orbit of the binaries by measuring the wiggle of the secondary star, if our star has a compatible companion. Uh, we are glad that my, co my younger colleague produced so many, so many binary star measures, and now we wait for radial velocity measurement in order to find out whether they are disturbed by the existence of the hidden mass. I'm, I was still talking about Limbang and the binary star which would lead, like in many, many of the observatory, to the discovery of planet or exoplanets, we call it. We come to the point, maybe you are you were aware that our solar system consists of the sun in the center of it and surrounded by nine other planets. But six years ago, Pluto was discarded as a planet. Pluto was considered too small to be a planet and Pluto was kept away. But here, in 19... 
2016, a new solar system planet was found. Why? Take so long since Kepler or Galileo aimed his telescope to the star that this small planet has been found. Now, this small planet is not located at the obvious place where the planet was or should be. It is located in the so-called Kuiper Belt. That is the area just outside, way outside of Pluto's orbit, where there are many small bodies swarming the solar system. One of them happened to be this small planet, the small, yeah, small planet rotating or revolutionary uh, orbiting the sun. But since there are so many small bodies in that area, people did not notice it until 2016. Just think, Galileo aimed his telescope to the moon and to the stars in, 18, in 1620 or something, and it takes about 400 years to detect this small planet around, around the sun. But it is fascinating that takes about so many years and the planet was not so big, only 700 kilometers in size, and takes about 700 years once rotating, revolutionary the sun. This means that once every 700 years, if there was a man who lived there, move around, around the sun. We takes only one year to move around the sun. So if you are now 50 years, this means if you are, not, you are 20 years of age, so you have already 20 times moving around the sun. But this planet will move around the sun and take 700 years to move around. I mention this because there are many exoplanets whose size is about a small planet. Then, how do you distinguish between planets and, <clears throat> and satellites. There are many ways to distinguish between planets and satellites, but I will not touch this because time, I think, will not allow us to do so. But um, here is just an indication there is very meager, very faint boundary between planet, small planet and very large satellite. We go further to the, the, yeah. Here again, I would like to remind you to the existing textbook that our sun is there, surrounded by Mercurius, by Venus, by the Earth, and, and, and so forth. But this small planet take a very extreme action, move around the sun, in such an elongated orbit and in such a big and and its plane of orbit is inclined with a large angle here compared to, to other planets. The question then is, is where this planet comes from? Can we explain in a regular way that the, these planets are formed by the remnant of the solar system material? who will not aggregate into the sun and form planet like this. It was easy when Laplace did not know the planet here, explain the existence of this planet around here, because it says that Laplace a long time ago explained that once upon a time, maybe four and a half billion years ago, there was only the material spread all over the place where it is now the solar system. The central part of the material coagulate, condense into the sun, and the rest will condense into, will form planets. But this is certainly different. Maybe this is taken from other, sol other solar system, attracted by the sun, and move into, into this orbit. <clears throat> I would like now to
to mention again the very small planet. We called it the ninth planet of the solar system. Yeah. There are the, this is the solar system surrounded by planets that we know of explained in the textbook already, but there are many objects moving around the sun at different angles and different form of orbits. Here is planet 9, which was formed two years ago. Why it is called planet 9? Because it is the planet number 9 that moves certainly around the sun in a complete orbit. This body for example, I mentioned 2013 RF 98 was not called a planet because the orbit looked like moving around the sun, but it collects material from its surrounding. And therefore, it is difficult to say that this, or this is a planet. It is different than planet number nine. It's like Pluto moving perfectly around around the sun. <clears throat> we come now to the title of my talk. That is, as you remember, the, on the paper that is distributed, exoplanets and zone of affinity, <clears throat> and zone of affinity. Actually, what are we looking for now, astronomers? Are you looking for exoplanet or extrasolar planet or very strange planet? Indeed, this has been found, very strange planet. I will discuss later on. Whatever you look for, please go back to the definition of planet. I have just mentioned that the planet is an object moving around the parent star and it doesn't carry weight, it doesn't carry surrounding object like the sun, uh, like the sun is surrounded by a planet. Exoplanet, uh, strange planet now are formed plenty around us. For example, there are planets which are very big. We call it super Earth. Maybe some thousand of them now have been formed, have been identified. There are planets which very hot, much warmer than Jupiter. Or there are brown dwarf. Now brown dwarf, brown dwarf are in the boundary where you can ask whether these are planets or failed a star. What is a star? What is a small star? Small stars are body that is accumulated around the center mass and the point of mass, but it cannot produce energy of its own. The sun produces energy from the fusion. Hydrogen and hydrogen meets there in the center of the star and produce energy using the so-called Einstein famous law, delta M, M equal to no, energy equal to mc squared. You can measure the energy produced in the center of the of, of, of the sun. But brown dwarf are planets are big enough, it's too big for a planet, but nevertheless it is too small in order to produce energy of their own. Therefore it's called brown dwarf. Or the lone rangers. These are planets found individual in space without rotating around its parent orbit. There are some thousand that have been found so far. Yeah. So there are many interesting objects that you are looking for or happen to look for, but what we are looking is the so-called exoplanets, the real planet which are rotating or revolving around the parent stars, like our Earth revolves around the Sun, that is the planet. Side, side, side. But where do you look for? There are some 300 million stars in our galaxy, in our Milky Way. It is not possible in one's lifetime to, to study 
each individual start to find the companion. Therefore, you have to have a guess. The best guess is to look for a star whose temperature is similar to the, Earth, to the sun. The sun's temperature is 6,000 degrees Kelvin. The spectra is already known, the mass is already known. And you can easily detect from so many stars which have the characteristic, which possess the characteristic of the sun. And then you look for it in order to find out whether these stars are surrounded by, by, by planets or by system of planets or not. Right? <clears throat> Next slide, please. Yeah. Here is our limitation. So many stars form a Milky Way, as I mentioned before, 300 million stars, to form this, this system of stars. But our search has been confined to this small distance. This means that what you have found today is only the sample from this small distance. We don't know yet about the area, the, 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 the other large area, whether they contain stars or suns that are surrounded by planets. But our sample here indicates that up to now, 216, 2016, there are about 4,000 exoplanet candidates have been detected, have been confirmed. Now, out of these 4,000 planets, not all of them are found in the habitable zone. This means that, that many of them are just planets without possibility of bearing life on it. <coughs> Slide to go there. Yeah? Now, back in, 19, in 2014, there are many the first by the astronomers, formed by astronomers. Among the first, two Earth-like planets forms circling solar class star at a distance of thousand light years. Now, when this planet are found, we astronomer hailed euphoria, as you mentioned. Are we alone in the universe? We forget that by that time, that not all planets can be habited. Not all planets can bear the life like the Earth. But at that time, people are already here with Sura with the question, are we alone in the universe when many planets are found? We move now to the planet GL. GL is the name of Grisel 581, found in the habitable zone around that star 6,000 degrees. This was a surprise to us because the sun is 6,000 degrees, surrounded by seven planets. It's okay, we know that life existed here on Earth, but this is very cool star, only 3,000 degrees. Lisa is the name of the German astronomer, and in his catalog, star number 581 is called Red Star. But still, a star, I just mentioned before that some dwarf star F dimension equal to the stars, but cannot produce energy of their own. But here is 3,000 degrees Kelvin. Red stars produce their own energy. Therefore, it is called a star. It is surrounded by planet, and one of the planets that is that are surrounding the GL581 happen to be in the habitable zone. The habitable zone is, of course, different than the habitable zone of the sun because the temperature here is 3,000 degrees, but the sun is 6,000 degrees. Therefore, the habitable zone is lar larger, is farther away than it could possibly have in the stars. Why habitable zones depends on the temperature of the main stars, of the parent stars. Of course, habitable zone means that planets can subdue life. In order for a planet to be able to support life, you have to have water. If the temperature is smaller, the star is cooler, 
then at such a distance, the planet, the water will become frozen and it will not be possible to support life. Therefore, the meaning of habitable zone is very important, which I will discuss later on. And then, a double stars, there are two stars close together, are found to be circled by a planet. This is very funny because the planet will not have constant temperature. When it is far from the double star, the temperature is cold, but when it is close, the temperature gets so much warmer. And then another type of planet, which is larger than Venus, for example, in Kepler 68c. The question is whether this planet is conducive for living matter. It was found only on 7 January four years ago. So there are many objects, many kinds of objects, which can be grouped, can be called planets. But there are differences in stature, in physics, and <clears throat> in everything. Slice, next slide, please. Another example of very funny structure in the universe is new found alien planets may be capable of supporting life. We, of course, we support it. We celebrate the finding that at the same time, one star has two planets that would be able to support life. For example, in our own solar system, only one planet, the Earth, can support life. Even Venus and Mars cannot support life. But <clears throat> astronomers are still trying to find indication that the Mars was possible to support life in the past, and Venus will be able to support life in the future. Up until now, the question has not been given answer definitely. People are not afraid they are trying to look for evidence life on this planet. Here, two alien planets may be capable of supporting life orbiting one star. This is very exciting to know that such a thing exists. But to make a summary of NASA's Kepler Space Telescope up until about 2015-2015, there were 104 exoplanets, including four possibly rocky worlds that circle a red dwarf star. Why rocky is important? Like our Earth, we can live here because this, the foundation is very rocky. But you cannot live in Jupiter, where you can only find gases that surround the planet. You cannot build houses there because it's surrounded by planets. You cannot live on Venus because Venus is too hot for living condition and water does not exist in fluid form, but <clears throat> in the form of gas. Here, out of this object, spotted four possibly rocky alien planets. Rocky is very important, the catch word. And the four exoplanets circle a red dwarf. This is funny things, as I have told you. The temperature red dwarf is only 3,000 degrees centigrade. Our sun is 6,000 degrees centigrade. Why this happened? We don't know yet. But still, the question persists. How life form on each planet? Slide. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Here, two and a half years ago in 2014, because if you look at the catalog, at the so-called habitable exoplanets catalog list, only 21 planets that have the best chance for life beyond our solar system. Out of so many thousands, so many millions of them, only 21 that have the chance. So we are a privileged being, actually. I don't know who makes us privileged, God or something. I, I don't know, but the catalog gives astrobiologists a great place to start when talking about life beyond Earth. I have a list of 
10 planets that would be possible to be to to support life. For example, this capital of 7B, the temperature is right for developing life, for building life, but <clears throat> whether they are permanent or not, we don't know. There are many many different sizes among the planets that have been found. From the very small one, Kepler belong to Kepler 11, Kepler 11 also a small one, to the Kepler 7, which is very big. And mind you, Jupiter is our planet, about this size, but there are many super, super Jupiter. This is our Earth, and there are many planets which are bigger than the Earth, but we are still privileged so far, because we live on Earth, and we know only at the moment, until now, that living beings can be found only on Earth. There is no indication so far that life existed in other planets of our solar system, but maybe existed in other planets. Slides, next slide, please. I <clears throat> would like to show you some extreme examples of Kepler 5. Kepler 5. 5. Kepler is the name of the telescope launched by NASA some years ago and have found so many candidates for exoplanets. For example, in Kepler 5, all the planets belong to Kepler 5 despite the fact that the same, that the sun, that the barren star is equal to the sun approximately, but all the five planets are found within the orbit of Venus. This is a true scale, it's a scale, but it's in a <clears throat> not in true scale. Mercury, if Mercury moves here, all the five planets here move within, within the domain of Mercury's orbit. And it is difficult to understand, to gauge, to deduce that these planets can help our life because the temperature would have been so great. Mercury cannot help her life, cannot have life on it because the temperature is so great <clears throat> that everything is <clears throat> cannot stand there. Here, Venus and Earth, nothing is within. They are all are within, within the circle of the Earth, but the, the sizes are different. So I, <clears throat> Therefore, in order to make more accurate determination of planets, in my paper I called it taxonomy, we need to do better hunting. And planet hunting is an ongoing process that's resulting in the discovery of more and more planets orbiting distant stars. This is what we achieved so far. But as the hunters learn more about the variety among the tremendous number of predicted planets out there, it's important to refine their techniques. New work led the Department of Terrestrial Magnetism upgrade for one method of finding planets or confirming other planetary detection. We are not satisfied yet with what we have achieved so far, with what astronomers achieved so far. I'm not astronomers anymore because I've been retired. That new tools, new method must be found in order to determine the characteristic of the planets. The question are twofold. First, whether these are real planets, and second, whether life can exist on those planets or not. <clears throat> so I, now, I go to the habit, habitability. That is the question that our philosophers was trying to answer since the time immemorial. That is, are there life on other planets? First of all, we have to talk about habitability. That is the zone where life could possibly exist. One of the most important characteristics of an alien planet is whether or not it falls into what's called the habitable zone. 
and built up a stone is called Gurdy Locks. That is the nickname, like rays of not too close, not too far distances from the parent stars that might allow the planet to host life. This is the important slide, next slide, the habitable zone of the, of the sun. Now, this is the sun, one time mass of the sun. Its habitable zone is between Venus on the inner side, that's on the side of the sun, and near planet Mars on the other side. Everything that are found here, a planet that are found between Mars and Venus, could harbor life. But if the sun is larger, for example, you have two suns here, two mass of the sun, the habitable zone is also taken or moved away from the zone of the habitable zone from the sun. But if you have a mass, if you have a star mass of half, one half of the sun, the habitable zone is, is, is nearer. That is why when you have found a planet, a possible candidate, you try to find out where are they orbiting relative to their parent planet. If they fall here, they fall here, for example, certainly you can say, no, life cannot exist there. But remember, that astronomers are anthropocentric, based on their own experience. As I told you, life is only one so far. We don't know whether life exists and can, can, can endure or survive with carbonate, for example. We don't know. But the fact is life is like us. You need water, you need food that we are used to. Therefore, if life if there is a planet here for the sun, is formed here, for example, certainly there is no life like us on this planet. Therefore, so far, only Earth can support life. The rest of the planet that surround the sun are empty in the sense that they cannot support life like what we are seeing here on Earth. This comes to the important conclusion, actually, because, because life can exist only on the condition of the Earth like now. We should be aware and we should take care of the condition of the Earth that it can support life forever. We cannot destroy the Earth. If we destroy the Earth, for example, we make the oxygen instead of 20%, only 10%. We cannot, we cannot survive on the Earth's atmosphere. If we make the Earth warmer by several degrees, for example, you cannot live on the Earth. Because we used to it, and the fact that we are born here on this condition that fail on the Earth. This is the so-called habitable zone, and habitable zone must be determined very accurately what kind of parameter that are needed in order to say that the habitable zone exists. As I have mentioned before, the planets here to be rocky. Mars is partly rocky and Venus is also partly rocky. It cannot support life. And Venus, Venus is surrounded or surrounded by heavy atmosphere. Man cannot breathe on it. Jupiter, Saturn and Jupiter, of course, are gases. We cannot stand on it. Slides, next slides. We have talked about the discovery of exoplanets. How did they exist? How did they discover? Here is one of the examples. As I told you, we are studying binary stars, but here we are dealing with more smaller bodies that surround, that orbit around the planet. Suppose these stars, whatever star it is, has a planet of this size. When they are far away, 
the brightness of the stars remained constant. But when the planets began to be in the edge of the star, the brightness dropped. When they are here, when, when the planet is in the side of D, the brightness of the star will drop lower. But when it gets here, at F, for example, the light of the star will become normal again. And when the planet is outside, outside meaning that it is not between us, between the observer and the star, it will Sir, become normal again. Yes, please. Is this the same way they find the binary star? Yes, indeed. Except that in binary stars, A, B, C, T, R may be larger than this one. This is only smaller. So the change of light level is very minute, very small. You detect only 1,000 of the brightness of the stars, or 1,000 maybe. Therefore, you need a very sensitive instrument to measure the brightness of the star, of the star there. You are right. Any more questions? Yes, please. Well, Venus is surrounded, is surrounded by CO2 only. There is no, there is no single atom roaming around the atmosphere of Venus. Yeah. yeah I, I have read, uh, the, there is two, there is three uh, work in astronomical. The first is the brown work, uh, red and white. Uh, which one to become? Uh, new planet, or fire star, or maybe supernova or black hole. Which one to be a... Uh, Sorry, the last question is, you have three types of dwarfs. Yes. You are right. There is brown, red, and white. Yeah. Uh, which one to become a... Uh, Vex can become a host become of the planet. A new planet, or a uh, fire star, or maybe supernova or black hole. Can you explain about that? Okay, I, I, I jump a little bit to answer your questions. There are three brown, you are right. What is it brown dwarf? Brown dwarf has no energy of its own to produce. Yeah. So far, astronomers have detected planets, exoplanets around brown dwarf and red dwarf. Nothing yet around white dwarf. We don't know why, but maybe because white dwarf is too bright to be detected to accompany the planets. Okay? So, so far only one red dwarf has been found to host one planet. And so far already only two brown dwarf hosting planets. That is the statistic that we get. The, we have never been able to answer why. Not we actually, astronomers have not been able to answer. So how about the supernova and black hole? Okay, the lady here asks whether this dwarf can become a supernova or black hole. Supernova is an exploding star. When they have excessive energy, they produce bright light as if the star exploded. Only heavy stars can become a supernova. Heavy stars meaning that the mass of the star is about 100 times larger than the mass of the sun. White dwarf has only maybe one tenth the mass of the sun. So it can never become a supernova. It will be dying, of course, but very slowly, very calmly, and very majestically. majestically. Supernova is a star which likes to show off, exploding, give off very bright light, and then die. That is the difference. Okay? And supernova and black hole can be achieved by a star when the mass is even larger than a supernova mass. Maybe hundreds of solar mass can become a black hole, but not 
the sun. The sun will never become a black hole. Thanks God. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please. Why the orbit of planet is ellipse, not alpha spectral? Why the orbit of planet? Well, the planet usually have very small mass compared to the parent star. If you have a mass of about equal, uh, the bird, two bodies of about equal mass, then they will circle each other. But planet is like a comet. It is attracted to the sun, yeah, like in planetary system, and move around it in the so-called elliptical orbit. That is why, because the mass difference that make that make um, that make planets orbit following an elliptical orbit instead of circular orbit. Binary stars show the same effect. If the two mass, if you see the binary star of the same masses, then they orbit circularly. But if one of the member of the binary star is much smaller than the main star, then the orbit will be in elliptical form. I hope this answered you to your questions. Is there any more? You, have, you still have questions, please? No? Okay. Sorry. Yes, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you have to determine, you have to measure the position at its time. For, yeah, for example, the Earth. On the 31st of January, the, it is here, relatively close to the sun. We wait. One later, it is there. Two months later, it is there. In June, it is far away, as compared to the position of the 31st of January. July, of course, and then in September, in, in December, comes right again to the earlier position. So you have to measure it. You cannot predict, you cannot, oh, well, you can, you can use the theory to predict the motion of it, but uh, in order to say yes or no, you have to pinpoint, you have to measure the position. Yes, please. Yes, indeed. According to Kepler's law, the Earth is faster in January, moving around the Sun, and slower in June. Right now, we are slow. We are slowing down because we are far away from the from uh, from the Sun. It is a consequence of Kepler's law. It covers the area that the planet cover is is the same in the unit of time. You're right. Yeah. Ask, yes, please. Um, can we use Einstein's theory of general relativity to explain the movement of the binary star? And what would the explanation be? Well, I think the general relativity is far too, far too, what do you call it? No, to be honest, you cannot use it because all of them are in the domain of Newtonian, Newtonian velocity instead of, instead of Einsteinian velocity. And also the mass are bigger, are very large. Okay? Allow me now to go back to this. This I have explained and you have pointed correctly that the sun, that the earth moves faster in January than in, than, in, um, than in June, for example, because in June you are farther away from the sun. Yeah, but. 
Now, this is the principle of Doppler effect applied to the motion of, the, of binary stars. For example, when a star is here, it tends to move that way. The observer on Earth will receive a lesser frequency than if this, the object is here when it looks like moving toward the observer of the Earth. You will have a higher frequency and the light will become bluer than when it is moving away from the sun. This is very common when you are standing on the platform of the station, hearing or listening to a, to a signal from a, from, a, from, from a train. And by, by studying the motion of the spectral line to the left, to the blue, or to the right, you can measure the speed of the, of, of the object you are you are you are studying here. For example, when this appear here, the spectral lines will become redder. That means the absorption line here will move to the right, and here the absorption line will move to the blue sides. The following example will also tell you about the same more or less the same pass line. Here, Doppler effect on the spectrum of stars. This is the unshifted line when the object is not moving relative to the observer, and when the object is moving away from the observer, the line, the absorption line is shifted toward the red, and when the object is moving closer to the observer, the absorption line appear in the blue, in the blue domain. And by studying the motion of the of the absorption line, you can measure the speed, the velocity of the object you are concerned with. <clears throat> okay? This has been applied for studying, for measuring the binary stars component or the planetary component of the exoplanet. I have mentioned that atmosphere is very important. Since the very beginning, we have filled, we have breathed with the composition of about 80% of nitrogen and 20% of oxygen. And, but our atmosphere will not remain as such. If the temperatures get hotter, then the particle of the atmosphere will move away from us. And if the temperature get lower, then the particle, the atmospheric particle will come closer to each other. And because of the change of gravity, surface gravity, Pluto, Triton, Titan, and so forth, and because of the stellar heating, when temp temperature goes higher here, up, 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 upward, and the strength of gravity becomes larger, then some of them, then some of them, body here, will lose its atmosphere. Here, planet Jupiter will never lose its atmosphere because the temperature is always low and the surface gravity is high. But Mercury, you, you asked me before, the temperature is very high and the surface gravity is not very very strong. Therefore, Mercury has no atmosphere. The Moon, for example, is known to be empty of atmosphere, to be devoid of atmosphere. There is no atmosphere on the Moon because the temperature is about the same as the temperature of the Earth, the distance from the Sun is the same, but the surface gravity is very low. Therefore, the particles in the Moon, on the Moon, will move much faster, greater than 2.4 km per second instead of 11.2 km per second like the Earth, it loses the atmosphere very quickly. A particle on Earth will have to move greater than 11.2 km per second in order to go away 
because of the combination of temperature and the surface gravity. Here it's, it's important that you find an exoplanet. Please study the temperature, whether the planet has atmosphere or has not an atmosphere, or has the void of atmosphere, and because of the importance of it for living being. But if you leave the planet as such, it doesn't matter. This is only when you will find whether the planet has an has an living matter or not. So, slide back. I will leave this. Uh, oh yeah, litany of losses and deaths. For example, Mars, Pluto, which is very far away. <coughs> He gases lost in former time. It may have hydrogen, it may have methane and nitrogen, but in the course of time, because of the combination of temperature and combination of surface gravity, the main element have already lost. Compared to the Earth here, now you have hydrogen, helium, but you cannot find in other planets. And this is, and so forth, therefore, <coughs> We have always to measure the temperature of planet found, exoplanet found, whether they can have, they can maintain the key gases or not. Next slide, please. If I have mentioned it before, the, the structure of the planet is also important, whether it has a rocky or, or not, because there are the gravity is determined by, by the structure of the planet. I will not discuss this in detail. Slide. <clears throat> now, I think you asked me about the position of the Earth in this exaggerated picture. In June, for example, the sun is on the northern side, like this one. Temperature on the southern side has become or the other way around. Here we in June, it is winter on this, on this side, but warmer on that side because the sun directly hits the northern sides. Three months later, position is here. The 23 degrees signs here indicate the axis of the rotating body of the Earth with respect to the so-called ecliptic the plane of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. And it's always changing as you go around around, around the Sun. And it determines exactly the heat that is received on the surface of the Earth. Therefore, changes all the time, the temperature and the condition of the Earth. That is different than here. Venus is 177 degrees. It's almost rotating and rolling around, around the sun. Mars is 25 degrees close to Earth, and therefore, the season on Mars is about the same as the season on Earth, except that Mars takes twice longer time to rotate around the sun than, than the Earth's period around, around, around the sun. <clears throat> This will explain, will also explain the condition of the planet when you found a planet that is surrounded, surrounding a parent star. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I will leave this because this is only that the super Earth and around the solar type star. Oh yeah, this is important. Why it is called super Earth? The star, you have solar type stars. When you see a star whose spectra are similar to the Earth, you know exactly, more or less, the masses of the star, the temperature of the stars, and the condition of the stars. Therefore, the star is concentrated on the super Earth Wrong solar type of star. There are many solar type stars. Maybe 25% of the stars in the universe are solar type. The rest are bigger or smaller. Uh, here, for example, Gliese, I mentioned before, Gliese 581e, 
E is a, a meaning planet number 5, found in Grisha 581, has mass about 1.9, greater than 1.9, about 2 solar Earth mass. It's the semi major axis is very is close to circle, 0.03. Discovery year is this discovery method by Radio Veloste, as I have just mentioned. <clears throat> Otherwise, it is not possible because, because it is too close to the sun. But Grisha 581 is found in the habitable zone. It is interesting. <clears throat> slide from the slide. We, we will skip this. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but despite the fact that it is four years ago, but the number of exoplanets found up to that time have very significant statistics. Most of them have the Neptune size. Only 381 out of 2000, I think, have the Earth size. And only 81 have larger than 30 Earth diameter. This means that there are certain preference for planet around the parent star. The fact that there are so many Neptune size, that is about 4 to 12 Earth diameter, have been found, maybe it is due to selection effect rather than due to the natural effect. The larger a planet found, the larger a planet can be detected is, of course, proportional to its mass. It's very easy to determine rather than a smaller planet, for example, here. This is the fact until about 2013. And if I remember correctly, the curve is similar until about 216. It does not change. So maybe. We have to find out a mode, a method, to determine the new masses until, it, as I wrote in the article, the, ta the taxonomy of the stars should be studied very carefully. Yeah, please. Grisel DNG. Why DNG? Grisel is the name of the parent star, and D is the planet number four in Grisel, and G is E T E F G planet number seven in the in the in, in the in in the system here. Only two out of five, two two out of six are found in the in the habitable zone. But we have not been able to prove whether the two can subsist life or not. It is difficult because the fact the star is very far away, and if you send some signal to there, it will take about hundreds of years and then return back. But one cannot overlook the fact that if there, is, there are people there, they also evolve. And during the evolution of these people, they will reach a, math, a period where they master the electromagnetic electromagnetic contribution. Then they will be able also to master, to develop handphone, for example. Maybe they have also have tried to send us, but we have not been able to reach, uh, to reach it or to interpret it so far. And this is about Grisha. There are many more stars. Some of the planets are found totally outside of solar, of habitable zone and some are only one out of so many are found in the, is found in the habitable zone. Slide? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now I'm closing to the end. Anyway, there is a beautiful pair on Earth that I would like to show you, that is this one. Slide, try it. Yeah, that's beautiful pair. Thank you very much for your attention.
planet is, the distance is so far away. And in Hollywood film, uh, the actor used a uh, teleportation. Is it true if we can apply it? In which film? Maybe in Interstellar, in, in so many films use a uh, te teleportation. It's possible to use this in the real, in the real life. Teleportation. Teleportation. To move only in the film using a black, a black hole and the moving is so fast and only two seconds uh, the astronaut will be uh, landing in the other planet. Yeah, as you are, as you are aware from the physics physics text, textbook that no mass can move faster than the speed of light. That is the limitation, and I have not been able to see the possibility to move any or any satellite faster than the speed of light. The speed of light. So it's possible, it's possible to make a black hole because I think the black the black hole is uh, the way to make a teleportation. I think. Because if you can make a black hole, you can move faster. Yeah. Uh, the lady here asked what, what the black hole was or is. It is only formed out of star of 100 solar mass or more when, the, when it becomes coagulated, become closer, 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 then it will become black hole and the mass is very the mass of the black hole is of a black hole is maybe one solar system but the radius is only 15 kilometers and in life I don't know how to do that I'm not a movie maker or filmmaker but I'm living in a real world that will be difficult I think to make certain things it is easier to imagine that such a thing could, could exist, but in reality, I think it is difficult. I have to live with a, with a solid rule that I have that I can measure. That is what I'm doing now. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit about the dark energy or dark matter? It's really interesting that it's a style and existence is kind of The gentleman here asked about the existence of dark matter, which is no belief to be 35% facts in the 35% of the universe contain of dark matter, maybe more than 35%. And um, <clears throat> energy, I think, can be produced within it because the formation or the combination of matter closing each other. Dark matter does not mean that it is completely dark. It does not radiate in a way, in a form that we can detect so far. I'm, I'm not trying to move into the domain of hocus pocus, but astronomers have found that the number of mass, of existing mass, shearable mass, is less than the fact that the gravitation mass produced by the material. This means that there is something that you cannot see but exists. The existence of it is called dark matter. But I, I'm not aware how to produce energy in dark matter so far. Maybe my colleague from the physics department out there can answer it. Dimas, can you answer the production of energy in dark matter? Sorry, sir. My uh, I haven't learned it. At, my topic is not about uh, dark matter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot answer that. No, but I mean, yes, but is it possible to build light speed rocket? A what? A rocket that has speed the uh, same with the light, like speed rocket. There is a possibility, but I don't know how to do it.
Yes. Uh, what is the term and condition apply when we define about life that can be supported when we uh, try to find exoplanets that can be from us? Because I ever read that some of the bacteria uh, can live without oxygen. Well, you are right. Life that we know of is like you and me, like bacteria, like Zika. Some years ago, did not was not known, but it exists in the universe. So there are many forms of life, on, even on Earth. But in order to predict, to extrapolate the existence of life, it's very difficult, and in science, it is not allowed to extrapolate that. You have to have base, you have to have evidence that such a material, such a life exists here on Earth. And how they are formed is another question. If you look at the domain of health, for example, there are many bacteria that were not known before, but it existed. Yeah. That is also a form of life. Therefore, Man cannot rule out completely that the life did not exist on Mars or not. Maybe another form of life existed on Mars, but it could not survive to form mankind, humankind like us, maybe. Or another form of life could exist on planet Venus, but again, it could not survive to become men like you and me, like people who are who are here. The question is then, are we the crowning achievement of nature or just a statistically middle product of nature? Are we the best in the, nat in the natural world or the worst in the natural world? We don't know. Maybe we are just the average. I'm sorry? Almost of the planets in our in solar system have a rotation direction from east to west. But where is Venus? Uh, it, uh, Venus has rotation west to east. Yeah. So uh, uh, how we can explain that? Well, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, according to the theory of Planck or to Laplace, the origin of the planetary system on Earth, uh, on our solar, in our solar system, is caused by the movement of one direction. And then one becomes the center of planet Jupiter, one becomes the center of planet Venus, one becomes the center of planet Earth. And, but it happened that when you get to the center of planet Venus, maybe in the beginning it was moving Venus was rotating in the same direction as the original, but in the course of time, there was a force which contradicts the movement of Venus that makes it counterclockwise movement. And in theory, it is possible, but in practice, I never thought when it happened. We cannot explain it. Now, suppose someone clever on Earth can throw away all the ice and the pole. What happened with the rotation of the Earth? It will be it will be faster. It will become faster, right? Because the mass, because the motion will not be the motion is influenced by the combination of mass and a distribution of mass. But we cannot we cannot move the ice on the pole, throw it away to the to the universe in such a way that to stop the rotation of the planet. There is a, the so-called uh, disturbing force that can force the planet rotate in the counter direction. But with Venus, there is still a question, I think, with the Venus rotating counterclockwise or clockwise. Because Venus is surrounded by, as I have mentioned before, it's surrounded by cloud, and there is no certain 
point on the surface of the earth that can be used for determining the rotation, the, the rotation, the period of rotation. That is my answer. <clears throat> yes, please. Uh, I have read the, the direction in our in in the sky is not is not evenly distributed. What could be? The direction of no galaxy galaxy have not evenly distributed in the sky, what could be? Yeah, but that's that may be caused that, that is caused by the uneven distribution of the original mass. Who guarantee that the mass can be or is distributed evenly in the universe? When you throw something on the on the on the sky, the mass is it's not distributed differently, except when you throw passing sands. Yeah, the original distribution may not be may not be even may not be even. I think that is the the, the explanation. And as a matter of fact, some of the galaxies are larger, and some are smaller. Why? But this is also depends on the original. Our, our original mass distribution. Yeah. Um, I want to ask about the still on the rotation of the Earth. About the? Rotation of the Earth. Yes. So this time is about the rotation of the Earth on its own axis. Right. Um, this is about the uh, slowing down <coughs> of the movement. I just want to know how big is this issue among astronomers? And um, I want to know which group are more interested in this slowing down of rotation of the Earth on its own axis, whether the astronomers or the ge geologists. <coughs> the one is rotating this way, and the mass distribution changes. Of course, it will change the, the speed of the rotation, but whether it permanently changes or not, we don't know yet. I, as far as I am aware of, the Earth rotated faster in the past because, or the Moon rotated faster in the past, and that influenced also the motion of the Earth. But as far as the geological distribution, the mass, mass distribution in geological time scale changed, I'm not aware of it. I think the only matter that can change the rotation of Earth, Omega, depends on the distribution of mass within the Earth. As far as I know, this 24 hours a day, or close to 24 hours a day, since time immemorial. Is there any indication that the, the, the speed change, the rotation of speed change? Um, that is just from my own record. I'm not the best. Yes. Yes.
the astronomy field in Indonesia? And what is our biggest contribution to the world regarding to the astronomy field? And I, I have no information in uh, to the past, all five have been gone into the science of astronomy. Yeah. Uh, and what is our biggest contribution to the world regarding to this field? Yes, I, I'm afraid to answer that because I am I was an astronomer. <laughs> I was the chairman of the Department of Astronomy and director of the course of Observatory. If I say something, then, then people will say I'm big-headed. But <laughs> you better ask that to the present director of the, the Observatory, whether our contribution is real or not in the existing astronomical world. But, I might say, I might be able to say that we have contributed to the distribution mass of binary stars, as I can show from the result that we have obtained so far. This unit has its own contribution to the existing working group. We contribute in the determination of binary stars. Only that, yeah. But uh, maybe some other people have contributed to the other field. Yeah. I'm afraid to judge to tell you that we have made great leap in astronomical science. But we did something to develop, to the adding, to add something to the existing working knowledge, yes, in the field of binary stars. I think that is what we can say. To, to contribute something in the existing body of knowledge, not to change the body of knowledge. That is not important. Where do you come from? From Bogota. From Bogota. Yeah. I teach in your high school. That's where you go to Bogota. Yeah, yes, yeah. that is where I'm going to send it. Now, suppose you speak in arts. What has the Institute of Tarian Bogor contributed to the science, for example? I think I'm not that from Bogor, but a certain professor go in the past produced a new type of rice, for example. I can say that. But whether the production of the new type of rice will change the attitude of the world or not. If you are a medical student in Jakarta, for example, you will be asked who changed the philosophy of Vitamin. Some people may answer Professor Eichmann. He contributed something on the meaning of vitamin B, vitamin B, and uh, Professor Bowen Goro, for what? He contributed something on the content of food, Professor Slamet, in the 50s already mentioned that in relation to eat more slap and fat as compared to America. It's not true. Fifteen years later, it was proven to be It depends from time to time. For example, the post Observatory in, in 1926 more or less formed one of the big observatories in the southern hemisphere. The southern sky has not been explored before. This is Terra in Donita for us to make. So their contribution was great, but later on, we are overlit, overpassed by the ever increasing, ever increasing power of science. I have a good example from the Institute in Bogor. The Institute of Bogor, of China and Bogor, has produced one doctor in economy. But when he became president, he was so stupid. I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is much. We have covered our uh, uh, end of the session. Uh, before, uh, maybe we can get Professor Bonham.
to meet you all. And in particular, to see, to meet people from outside of Indonesia who looks like us. <laughs> but the problem is, how are we going to defend Southeast Asia from attack? From a, from an attacking country that is important. <laughs> Yeah. yeah.